Hey there guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Microsoft Band 2. So originally I was going to do this in an all professional like kind of way and I'd written a script and everything and done all this footage and then I thought, nah, screw it. I'm just gonna talk you through it. That was an unintentional rhyme. See, who needs a script? I can come up with rhymes on the flies. So anyways, the Microsoft Band 2. This is quite clearly, based on the name, the sequel, uh, or the successor, to the Microsoft Band 1, which at the time was just called the Microsoft Band. Um, I was a big fan of the Microsoft Band. If you've seen my previous review, um, then you will already know that. Um, I thought the original band was a really cool device. It had 10 separate sensors, which is more than pretty much any of the other fitness trackers. I mean, nothing obscenely um, different. It had the normal heart rate monitor. Um, it had the usual pedometer. It had an accelerometer, lots of things ending in ometer. Um, and it used these to collect all the same kind of data as the others. On top of that, though, it had a GPS, which at the time wasn't that common. Um, I think now you can also get the TomTom Tom Spark that has a GPS. That's one of the most useful things I find. Um, it also had a UV sensor. Not sure how useful that is. It, you could use it to tell whether or not you need to put on sun cream, which is always a big issue for many of us, I'm sure. Um, on top of that, it had um, a few other things. Uh, a microphone for Cortana. If you didn't have Windows Phone, you couldn't use Cortana. So 10 sensors sounds a lot more impressive than it was but it was still um, jam-packed with stuff and the data it gave you was really useful and interesting and I found it really helped me to approach my running in particular in a much more structured way once I could see my splits and my best times and my exact routes. Um, and it was also just really interesting seeing how I was performing in the gym, how that was affecting my calories burned, which days I was walking the most. I mean, again, this is all stuff that you can do with most fitness trackers, but I just found that the Microsoft Band had an awful lot of information and it combined it in a really useful and interesting way and what appealed to me about the Microsoft Band initially was that it combined this with some great productivity features. Nothing, it wasn't a smart watch, it was definitely a fitness tracker first but it also had the ability to receive incoming notifications and it supported third-party applications. I had a, a media controller on there. I just really liked the whole package and then the fact that it could tell you things like your VO2 max, um, which other ones to my knowledge don't do, was just uh, icing on the cake. So overall, I really liked the Microsoft Band and it was the first fitness tracker um, that I wore regularly and really enjoyed. Previously, I'd had a Jawbone Up one and uh, that was a bit more meh. So yes, in terms of appearance, you can certainly see this is a much more handsome device uh, for me fitting my handsome wrist. It's much more curved than the old one. It has a, a nice curved display, similar to the Galaxy Gear Fit. The band itself is much more flexible rather than the kind of rigid, blocky thing we had before. Uh, the only downside is that this clasp is still rather large. It's very good to use and to easily change the size and the fit, but it's such a big thing that yes, it does still kind of get in the way when you're typing. I'm a writer and I type about 10,000 words a day, so I would know. Uh, it does get in my way, but I find if I move it up my arm slightly, and if I kind of hover my wrists, which you're kind of meant to do anyways, then it's not a problem. For me, it's not a deal breaker, so I don't think it would be for you either. And overall, it's a lot more comfortable. And one other thing is that the screen now has this nice Gorilla Glass layer, which means all those nicks and dinks that we had before on the Microsoft Band 1 should no longer be a problem. I've already scraped mine across the wall in Pret, and it's still looking good as new. You're welcome. So yeah, in terms of look and practicality, uh, Microsoft has probably 90% succeeded on their goal. If only they made the clasp a little bit smaller, it would be a comfortable, normal uh, fitness tracker. And overall, it's certainly a big improvement and I find I forget I'm wearing it a lot. So that's a good sign. I would like to have seen them make it fully waterproof. You still can't take it swimming, which is a shame. Um, and you're not supposed to take it in the shower. It is splash proof, water resistant, but it's not completely waterproof, which is a shame for some people. It's also, the battery life is still what it was before, about two days, uh, and you'll find that you get less than that if you use it on a run or something. 
Again, not a massive problem for me. Most people say they charge it every morning when they're in the shower because they can't wear it then, uh, and that's fine. And for me, it's fine as well. But if you are someone who rides to work, rides home from work, and then goes to the gym, you might find that you struggle a bit with the battery drain, and then you might lose your data, which would be a big shame. So unless you're super, super active, the battery's fine. If you are super, super active, you might want to have a think about just how much battery you're gonna need, and whether the band two can live up to your lofty standards. So in terms of the more interesting stuff, what has Microsoft done to upgrade the experience in terms of the internals and the software? Well, actually not all that much uh, if you compare it to the Microsoft Band 1. So the UI has got a slightly cleaner look and a couple of nice animations which weren't there before, so that's nice. Also, the UV sensor is now um, continuous when you're exercising, so it will tell you when you need to put on suntan lotion without you having to take a reading. Yes, that is what everyone wanted from the band one. What? <laughs> Anyways, that doesn't matter. Cool, it's there, great. There's also a barometer which tells you how many flights of stairs you've ascended during the day. Also, a little bit odd. So I'm wondering if Microsoft has got more plans for that. It would go to me like, you climbed three flights of stairs today, that'll be on the tube or the stairs outside my house. And I'm like, cool, good. Uh, thanks. But yeah, so those aren't super exciting. Uh, one feature that's come along that is quite interesting is now it has smart alarm, which means like some other fitness trackers, if you set the alarm, it will go off up to half an hour before the time you set it when you're in the lighter stage of your sleep. And this is good because it means you have less sleep inertia, you're less groggy in the morning. I had this old feature on the jawbone up and I find it works better on the Microsoft Band. Often when it wakes me up, I find I'm actually just about feeling like I'm waking up anyways. It's a strange feeling. Of course, I often end up going back to sleep anyways because my alarm hasn't gone off yet. Um, the real one, real alarm. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's useful. I don't use it as well as I should, but I think if you did have the willpower to jump straight out of bed, you would feel better using the smart alarm on there. Another really cool uh, feature that's an update for some people is that if you're on Android, you now have um, access to the keyboard for responding to texts. So you get your notifications through here, that's like calls, emails, SMS, even WhatsApp. But previously, um, you could only send a pre-written response if you were on either Android or iPhone. And you had to be um, on Windows Phone in order to access the cool on-screen keyboard to type out your responses. Now, even on Android, you can access that keyboard. So I can type a full response if I want to on my wrist. And it works way better than it has any right to. It's actually really cool. I mean, I can't see myself doing it instead of my phone. It's not exactly practical. It's still quite slow. It's definitely a cool gimmick to show off to people. And in an emergency, you could see it being actually really quite useful. So that's quite nice. I don't know if it works with iOS, but it certainly works with Android. Windows Phone users, as before, still get access to Cortana. Uh, sadly, we don't yet on Android. Maybe we will do in the future because they are bringing Cortana to Android and iOS. So um, watch this space. And actually, that's largely it in terms of measurable updates on the Microsoft Band 1. So it's quite a similar device. But what's cool and what a lot of reviews miss out is the fact that Microsoft has been continuously updating the software um, on the Microsoft Band 1 so that it's considerably better. Even if you've still got a Band 1, it's much better now than it was when you got it. They added a golf tile a while back, so now on both the Band 1 and 2, you can track your performance um, when you're playing golf. It's not something I've used, and I've heard it's not amazingly um, accurate, but that's like a great example of how Microsoft are continuously improving um, the experience. They've also added the cycle tile that was right near the beginning, so before you had to use the run tile when you're cycling, which wasn't very good for cyclists, now you've got a dedicated cycle tile, which is cool. Um, you also have the ability to um, do guided workouts on the band one and two. So you can go online, you can find a workout that you want to do and you can set it up. So today I was waiting in for a parcel, I couldn't go outside. Um, I was stuck for inspiration, it's quite hard to work out in my flat. So I looked on my wrist and I found that I could do a uh, lunge to barter. So normally I like to do my own workouts because you know I know what I'm doing, I like to I have a program in mind, but every now and then I like to mix things up and this was a bit of fun, it's something different. It talks you through it and you get to see your heart rate and it knows how hard you're working and it records it all, it's great. And an update to that that wasn't there before is now you can create your own guided workout. So if you know what workout you want to do and you just want to be prompted on your wrist, instead of looking like a noob walking around with um, a piece of paper, that's a noob, not a noobis. Um, <laughs> that's a really weird Egyptology joke. Then you can create your own um, workout on the Microsoft Health app 
and then you can sync it to your phone, uh, to your band, and then you can follow it in the gym. So that's something cool that wasn't there before. You can also now delete um, workouts or sleeps um, if the data is wrong, which you couldn't do before. And it's just all these little iterative um, improvements that Microsoft are bringing to the band too, that have, uh, to the band, um, that have made it better and better. And I imagine they're going to continue doing that with the band too. And I'm very interested to see where they go with it because there's lots of sensors that aren't being fully utilised at the moment, and they're clearly invested in this. So it's great. It's like you don't know what's coming next. It's like free updates. Your thing gets better and better after you've bought it. And I'm really excited to see how this performs in a year's time. I'd love to see something like movement tracking that would count reps on press ups, for instance. But that's probably something else big that Microsoft added to the band experience is the ability to install third party apps, which weren't there before. Um, and they've gradually improved the amount of access that developers have to the sensors. So now, um, I have a band tasker on my band, and that is basically um, a, an app that lets me use tasker for Android on my phone. Tasker for Android is a phone automation app, which lets you access all kinds of features on the phone. For instance, you can set up your phone so that the Wi-Fi connects automatically when you go home, and the Wi-Fi turns off when you leave the house, things like that. Um, with band tasker, I can use that as a controller for my phone. So I have a find my phone feature, which turns up the volume, and vibrates and makes noise for me to find the phone. I also have a call Hannah um, tile now, which lets me call my wife, just at a tap. I have the ability to turn off the phone and I can take a photo remotely. So if we're all posed for a photo in a group, I don't have to go and hit the timer. I can just uh, close the shutter on my band. Like these things are really cool. Like I said, there's also a media controller so I can control my music whilst I'm on the go. And again, it's interesting to see what the developers are gonna to bring to it in the future. And I've got a few ideas that I've been meaning to work on for a while. There's also the ability to much more easily, if you don't have any coding skill, set up a tile uh, for an RSS feed, which Microsoft has made very easy. So whatever weird hobby you're into, you can have now updating on your wrist for you, which is cool as well. Overall then, the Microsoft Band 2 still isn't perfect. It's definitely an improvement on the Microsoft Band 1, and it's definitely a very cool fitness tracker and a fairly useful productivity device as well, as it lets you keep your head out of your phone and keep you more present on what's going on around you. Overall, I really like it. I think it's a great step in the right direction. I do wish they'd brought a few more sensors, perhaps made it waterproof would have been really nice. But again, I'm really interested to see how they continue to develop it. And if they show the same um, interests they have done over the last year, then I think it's got great potential. Um, so if you're looking for a fitness tracker, then this is a great one. I'm going to be talking a little bit more in future in articles and also um, on this channel about how useful fitness trackers are in general and also um, how you can track your fitness without a fitness tracker and what some of the interesting future trackers are that can do all kinds of different things and whether or not they're any good. So if you're interested in the topic of fitness tracking in general, is it useful? That's a whole different question. But if you want a fitness tracker, this is a good one and I'm really enjoying using it. So yeah, few notes that stop it from being perfect, but gets a thumbs up from me. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.